is what's best for business. I gotta go take a big hairy dump. Oh my god. Next main event, a tag team match. Yes. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. My name is Turbo Tony and we're here with Matt Marsander. How are you doing there this week, Matt? Yeah, pretty good today, Tony. So? Yeah, not too bad. Um, no food-relating issues this week to talk about. No curry baby to speak of. No, 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 that was fine. Um, so, yeah, no, all, all, all pretty good, really. I mean, we had a, a pretty hectic week of Raw, I have to say. Uh, it, like in terms of wrestling and, and TLC, that uh, I, I don't know about yourself, but obviously with having the six hours worth of, of wrestling to talk about, uh, to watch, sorry, that we, we I, I struggled to get through this week in terms of watching wrestling. I have to admit with you, um, it hasn't been like the first the first week that this has happened with WWE. So um, I, I, I honestly say the same thing for me. I watched about half of TLC the night of TLC, and I pretty much crammed everything in last night. So yeah, yeah, no, I understand. It's been a tough <laughs> week. Yeah, I mean, I. This is the the main reason why I'm not an avid watcher of SmackDown because um, there's just it's just too much as it is. You know, it's it's very hard to uh, catch up with all the stuff, especially when there's a pay per view on as well. And if they haven't all been particularly great, then you know that just makes it even worse, really. So, but um, anyway, yeah. If you haven't joined us before, obviously this is a wrestling podcast. You would not have you know clicked the link if. Um, you know, for let's say what trying to watch a My Little Pony episode, that just seems weird. Why would you click this link? But um, it's in the name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you know what you're getting yourself in for. Uh, this is our fourth week, um, episode number four, and uh, we're nearing the end of the year, which is which is ironic because um, we, for us, I mean, we've been doing this this uh, podcast for quite a long time now, really. I mean, this we, I mean this is the fourth week of our relaunch, but you know, we 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 reviewed last year's TLC and that had the match of last yeah. year on that, which which we said so um yeah i mean this is a lot that happened this week you had obviously the pay-per-view and raw um so that's like like we said six hours worth of television to get through before we actually go through and actually review tlc and we review raw um there's a few little um extras that i just want to add in the start here i'm going to try and add in more of the the general backstage wrestling news as far as we've heard about it um and you brought a few things up to my up to my attention um before the event which almost made me double guess my prediction of the AJ Lee match and you said to me there that uh, and obviously I looked up on the source and everything that AJ Lee had a, a rather interesting altercation backstage yes um, and basically involved um, herself and CM Punk um, and apparently I, I, I can't I don't know who the girl the woman is that was involved she is a some sort I of celebrity don't know. She, I'd, probably an American celebrity the way that it usually is like yeah. You know, when it comes to major events, and we're having like multi award winning so and so, and any British fan like is just like, cool. I, they haven't won an award I've heard of. I don't know who they are. It's like it's like if you ask an American who, who Joe Pascali is, they're not going to know who the hell that guy is. But we do. We know who yeah, Joe Pascali it. is. But you know, that's that's the thing. But anyway, regardless, it doesn't really matter who she is, really. Um, but. She basically spoke to CM Punk. She said something. Uh, she said something. Like, oh, I'll see you later, fuckface, or something. Apparently, she calls everyone fuckface. And um, AJ Lee heard this and got in her face and had a, had an explosive tirade, shall we say? This was at the tribute to the troop show, so this is why I think it was probably more of an issue. That if it was just behind normal raw, then I think it would have been that much of a problem. But it was all over Twitter. Um, and yeah, I thought this might play into the fact. I mean, WWE have got a history of when stuff like this happens backstage. Um, <laughs> you that, misbehaved, naughty, naughty. No more belt for you. Yeah, I mean, they did it too. If you remember a couple of uh, a couple of years ago when RVD um, won the um, WWE title and he's also ECW champion, he lost yes. both those belts within a week because he got caught for. <laughs> Naughty Rob, are you on drugs? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> oh, no more, no more title for you. Yeah, so that happened this week. Uh, we also have very, very strong rumours apparently from very good sources that apparently Batista is scheduled to return after his filming of the his Guardians movie. You know, the Guardians. Um, I've heard that. I mean, sort of, um, sort of apparently reported to be at an event in February, wasn't it? Well, apparently, they're going to try and get him in as a surprise entrant at the Royal Rumble. Personally, I think that might be a little bit too soon. I know the guy's got a pretty hectic schedule, and quite, personally, I question him coming back, because, I mean, we, we've talked about this a little bit before, the fact that he's, <coughs> he's he's making it pretty well in. He's going to be in a very big movie. He's been in a few big movies already, um, so he's getting there in terms of his acting, uh, but maybe he's finding that maybe it doesn't pay as well, and he wants to come back 
don't know along those lines, but um, so. we'll, we'll see about that. But yeah, apparently there's quite strong rumours that he's going to be returning. I, I don't often, or I'm not going to be coming up every week and saying, oh, this guy's going to be returning, this guy's going to be returning. I made sure that the sources behind this are pretty strong, and it was PW Insider that actually came up with this news, so I'd be more inclined to pay a little bit more attention. Yeah. Um, we also had NXT's uh, final show at the Tampa area, um, and they had... Um, the, um, they had like a few matches there and I, I don't know when that's scheduled to air but I know we had a few sort of um, a few fans did their own sort of reports on what happened at the show and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that they're talking about the FCW days and things like that um, and it was just a bit of an interesting little tidbit of information that the, the guys behind the scenes are expecting um, no more than at least two people to be brought up to the main roster a year and that they've had lots and lots and lots of people come up to the main roster since then so in all fairness you know the development sy- developmental system has done pretty well the last couple of years I can't really fault WWE for that um, no, not at all. I'm trying to think. I mean, of people that have come come out of the developmental system recently. I mean, you've well, that's they pretty much created the two biggest factions at the top as it stands at the moment. Yeah, I mean, we, so we, it's not. It's pretty obvious that NXT is doing their job. Yeah, you can't you can't fault them at that grassroots. I mean, I mean, yeah, you could say that they they're monopolising it, and I'm a big advocate of the fact that they have too much of a bloated roster. But in terms of trying to get through new stars, I mean, you, you take this back five years ago, the one thing that you could have faulted WWE for was having no real people to call on, you know, but no, nah, that's not the case anymore. They've got, they've got a lot of rising talent. They've got a lot of people that are in that we, that we think could be the next big thing, um, which is good. They can only spell good things for us. WWE watches anyway. So, so that's the roundup really of like the, the most, the, the stories that kind of, um, uh, jumped out at me this week. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump straight into TLC, uh, the final pay-per-view of the year. And yep. um, they uh, one thing that that came out to me first of all anyway, and this is probably going to go into a whole new conversation with with, with, you, with yourself there, Matt. But um, they, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that the set that they've had for TLC is the same that they've had for um, a couple of years now. I remember them having yeah, that I set. Think it's, it's, isn't it the same? It's the same one that sort of Cena buried Wade Barrett under. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's the reason why it stands out to me because I remember he, he you know, he, he pinged off the, you know, the um, sort of like the chair and the yeah. whole thing that came tumbling down. Yeah. Um. So, you know, the I I remember that back in the. You know, I, I hate to say it's back in the day WWE, but they used to have a lot more stuff in there. Talking back two years. Yeah. They, they, would, they would put. I mean, you wouldn't see the same set used twice on a pay per view two in in two years, certainly. Um, and I don't know whether that's like a, a money thing or anything along those lines, or maybe the fact that they don't really have to because they're not exactly competing in any sort of sense of the word. Yeah. Um, but their set designs have been a little bit lackluster recently. I mean, I went back and I looked at some of the. Uh, I was. I have to admit, I was playing some old um, emulation of uh, No Mercy for the for the N sixty four classic game. I'm gonna have that opening song stuck in my head. <laughs> I think oh. everyone who's like of our age had that game, and that was just huge. But one of the main things that you, you let's say you go and have a look at that game, right? And you look through all the different venues that you can play in. All of the sets on that are unique. You know, they've got loads of different sets. Yeah. They've got loads of different stuff that you can do on it. And that's just by the way that WWE was back then. Um, mm. But they seem to be getting a little bit lazy with their set designs. But you know, that's, maybe this it was just a fault because I feel that this year's TLC did not live up to the high standards of last year's TLC. I don't know if that's something. I, I sort say. of agree. I was saying, isn't TLC meant to be their replacement for Extreme Rules? And they still have the, both, didn't they? I think they, they do they do at least. I mean, yeah, I mean, okay. Well, it's sort of like even with the entire show, I was just like, TLC, awesome, one TLC match. Yeah. And that was it. And like a no DQ match that I personally couldn't give two fucks about. Yeah. I think that, so like, um, mm. I think, I mean, I'm, I, I can understand why they only put one TLC match on the show because they wanted to make it special, but... I mean, at least put maybe like a a, 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 a tables, tables match. match. I mean, the tables weren't yeah. really utilised in the TLC match as it was anyway. So, but uh, if you're going to do something like like this and just call it that and have that as the theme of the show, yeah, I do agree. It seemed that there was a lot. There wasn't really much of the TLC to be told um, in, in regards to the entire show. But we'll go through each match by match and and we'll give our reviews on what we have from there. But uh, the, the the event opened with uh, with Triple H and Steph coming out, basically building up the show. I didn't have too much of a problem 
with this. The reason why why I, you know I didn't have a problem with having a promo to start a pay per view rather than a pay per view to start Raw is because at a pay per view people have already purchased it and it's sort of building up the show as it is trying to get yeah. the, you know trying to you know they they were trying their best to build up this show. Yeah, as... I mean if anything it was sort of like you all know why you're here sort of thing. Yeah. That, I mean, so much attention has been put on that unification title match that they really wanted it to. I mean, it it led into a pro, uh, into the opening video segment, so I didn't have that much of a problem with this. It wasn't a great promo by them, but it was just it was very cookie cut. I was expecting a different promo video. I don't know why, but it was essentially it was the same video, yeah. just on repeat. And it's like, oh, I don't know. I mean, there's only so many ways that you can turn around and say, well, Bruno San Martino held the belt. And Ric Flair held that belt, mm. and it's just like, yeah, but I'm 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 sort of driven mad with the same video. Yeah, no, I get you. I think that the, um, I mean, I've I always found it a little bit weird that they use the opening video package. Some of the opening video packages that they have for these pay per views are very high value and a very high production value, but they don't use that to promote the show. They use that on the show. I don't know why they do that. I think yeah, you should put your best video packages to build up the show rather than that. I mean, that was sort of our criticism of the last WrestleMania, the fact that they they had about four or five video packages of Cena and The Rock building up to that match. But that took yeah. so much time away from the rest of the show and you know, you, you would think that they would use those video packages to try and sell more buy rates before the you know, the sell more pay per views before the pay per view airs. Yeah, or I mean it wasn't the only story going around at the time, so Yeah. It's sort of like, well, doesn't anyone else get a mention? No. Yeah. It was. It was. It. I mean, I, I personally, I point to those video packages for the reason why WrestleMania was quite poor this year. But um, maybe some of people have, have different ideas. But um, but in, in regards to how the matches played out, anyway, we had uh, the, our first three-on-one handicap match of the night: uh, CM Punk versus the Shield. I was very shocked. I was quite shocked. I was quite shocked to see it as the opening match. But we don't have a world heavyweight champion anymore, so yeah, that can't be the the curtain jerking match. This this match <laughs> was. It was okay. Now, I'm not going to say I was. I'm not going to say it was brilliant because it was slow paced. It had to be. At the end, it obviously tuned up a bit, but they had to sort of tell a story. And I like the fact that they did bother to tell a story here for the reason why uh, CM Punk managed to beat the Shield. He managed to beat the Shield um, three on one. I I personally don't like that. I think that maybe they should have done a finish. Um, sort of. I think they should have switched this finish with the Daniel Bryan finish personally. Uh, maybe obviously because they got the fact that they know that the Shield. I mean, we know that the Shield is is going to break up sooner or later. And yeah, and it it's in the future. Sort of so a loss to the Shield doesn't hurt them as much as maybe a, a loss to the the Wyatt family. Um, yeah. So maybe I can kind of see their their sort of thinking of that. But um, it kind of goes into what we had on Raw that. He had another match against the Shield, but he actually had a tag team with the Usos beside him, and he lost the match. And it just seems very odd that he could beat the Shield, you know, three on one, and then he, yeah, but he can't the beat three on three. Yeah, so just seemed a bit odd there. But you know, I think it was a good match. It served it served its purpose, I guess, to sow more seeds of. It definitely, um, it definitely was a good match to sell to sort of sell the story of it. Everything really, um, you know, Punk is always the one who's to go into a pay per view and just like. And he saw, you know, he did turn around with the whole, oh, yes, I'm outnumbered, but then the only difference is how many people am I going to take down with me? Yeah. And it sold that very well. Mm, yeah. um, but, I mean, there was one thing about that, and that spill over the announce table. Mm, yeah, yeah. This was a very physical match. I mean, one of the things that was very good about CM Punk and, and, and Daniel Bryan in the ring is that it, 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 everything they do seems very, very stiff, doesn't it? It just seems like it, it really impactful. When you look at some, when you look at them, and you look at some of the Divas matches, you can see a clear difference. That yeah, there's, a, there's physicality there, which is, you know, sort of, you know, goes back to the old, you know, I'm not, I hate to say old days, but you know, the when when you go back <laughs> into the the you know the the eras that had you know these sort of like physical physical matches, they felt real. That's the reason why kayfabe could get over because it looked like you were really smacking oh, the yeah. out of your opponent, and that's the reason why I like what they did in this match and obviously a lot of stuff that Daniel Bryan does because it looks like he is kicking the guy it looks like he's going full pelt and um, but yeah I, I think it was a good match it was as good I think as it could have been and the shock was that he actually he managed to get the win I was quite shocked that he that he got the victory um, but you know it's, it, did... it plays into storyline I'm, I'm not too bothered That's with it. him losing really oh no not at all yeah so we've got um, 
the next match, which is AJ Lee against Natalia, which was the um, the, the Divas Championship match. Yep. Uh, there was some, there was actually some decent chain wrestling to be seen here, um, at least at the start. Yeah. Um, and so good little submission reversals and stuff like that. It had something to it this match. I, I must admit, I can't I can't really blast it that badly. Um, and you know, it's also I sort thought, of the things that when you get I actually jotted down. It's like if they wanted to prove that the women's division could put on a good match, this could be the match. Yeah, I, I would if I, if I mean if I, I agree with you. I think that this this wasn't the match that I was talking about in our first in our first few episodes. Um, of you know how to put them back on the map, um, but if you were to give them maybe another another five minutes, then you could do that. And I mean these these girls were were very much they were into this and they were um, they were going for it in this match. And it was oh definitely it wasn't I didn't see a bump or or you know a a slam or anything that made me cringe or made me think that's really bad. Um, and you know. I think that's kind of the way they have to go. I think this is kind of a, a trend that maybe WWE needs to do is where they don't put these girls that they know can't perform in the ring, which just puts a spotlight on the whole sort of disbelief on the whole wrestling sort of thing. When, you, when you've got these girls that are just like, uh, uh, or they're flopping about and they're not really bumping properly and it's, or they're not even hitting the ropes properly. And I, I, I this match didn't have any of that, so I can't really say anything. Um, but yeah, AJ retained, even though, she had that backstage altercation, um, mm-hmm. but I think that's the right. I think that's the right thing. I think I don't think that they should have taken the belt off her yet. I think if you're going to take the belt off her, it's so close to WrestleMania now. You've got to build a face woman to go against her at WrestleMania and take the belt off her. That's the way you've got to do it. Yeah, that's definitely it. I mean, the only other thing I would have imagined was if like she lost it now, and then you sort of had that sort of scrap to get back at Mania, but. Yeah, well, Royal Rumble's around the corner, so anything could happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could, they could. They, she could end up dropping the belt before Mania. I just don't think it is. I think that you, they, AJ Lee's built herself up as the as the big heel of a big female heel of the company. Um, that you, you really got. But to... she's the better promo girl. Yeah, she is. That's why he's like is still the best promo, well, female promo. Yeah. It's just the, like my problem is now with this. We're, we're going forward from here. Is that which girl is gonna is gonna take? the belt off of AJ Lee. That they've basically rotated all of their people that they think is high enough profile to 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 actually challenge for the belt now. So who are they actually going to put their stock in? Um I think I think it probably would be Natalia. I don't know why though because I mean if they were going to do that I think they should have waited until building up to Mania but I don't know. I, I it seemed maybe they're going to give it to one of the Bellas which seems to be what they want to do because even they were apparently uh. peoples of the year so yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. Nothing we can do about that. I think I think that's the exact um, you know, that exact sounds that plays through everyone's <laughs> head when um, when thinking about that sort of match. So, <laughs> um, so next match we had was was uh, the Intercontinental Title match, Biggie Langston against Damian Sandow. Uh, it really was a cookie cutter match. There wasn't really much to say about this. Langston retains and yeah, I was, I put here. I haven't seen. There was an electric chair drop. And I will admit that's one move I really haven't seen for a while. Yeah, I was just like, I was like, hold on a second, he's over his shoulders. Mm, where could this go? Because the amount of times like you see it and it's like, oh, it was a hurricane runner. But it's like, just like that was actually another. <laughs> Yay! Because I'm I'm quite I'm quite a fan of the electric chair drop. Yeah, I like. I mean, the, the thing about that that particular spot is that they it could go to either two ways. They could do the electric chair drop, which was big back in the um in the you know the Edge and Christian days. I mean, I remember Edge doing that you know quite a bit. But yeah. um, or you or you could do the other thing where they do the victory roll. And I haven't seen a victory roll in in WWE for God knows how long. Which used Actually, to be a huge move uh, in anyone's sort of move pull back in the the nineties. You were better than quick enough, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember Bret Hart putting away quite a few people with the victory roll. Um, but you know, I, of course, I would remember that because I'm a big Bret Hart fan. But yeah, quite quite vanilla this match. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with Langston, but he's he's growing. He's 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 getting a little bit tedious for me, really. As they need to break away from. He's just too proud to be the IC champion. If he's going to be a face, he needs to be a better face than this, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, th then they showed us the Legends panel here. They had uh, Mick Foley on, who, who, was, who was in good form, as always. And, uh, oh, yeah. And Booker. Booker T, full of WWE-endorsed crap, as always. <laughs> he, did, <laughs> he, he, does, he does kind of just come out with a little bit of BS, doesn't he? I mean... I mean, it's, that, it's sort of like with Booker, like Booker's mouth moves, but Vince's voice speaks. It's a little bit, isn't it? He's saying exactly what Vince McMahon wants to hear, you know, sort of thing. But uh, I, I, they also had Miz on 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 the panel. He was removed, obviously, for this bit because he had a confrontation with uh, Kofi Kingston, um, and really anything said about that storyline is a waste of time. Uh, just like that, that became the highlight of your night. Yeah, no, absolutely. there was going to be another Miz Kofi match. Yeah, we 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 rose up, thousands of people across the world jumped out of their chairs, knowing that their wish had finally come true. Christmas came early on TLC. We That's got it. to see another Miz versus Kingston match, an ODQ match, no less. Yeah, it, this what? feud is becoming a really bad waste of my time. I I'm getting quite frustrated now. It's not good wrestling. It was a no DQ match, which. I wasn't just interested. In. It was just a no count out match. That's really a scene they maximised on. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, it's that's like, essentially. There, yeah. Was, there wasn't actually a great. There was like no DQ. Great, swing a weapon. No, no weapons. Just it's TLC. There's chairs laying around. No, no, no chairs. No, no, it's fine. We just yeah, yeah. I thought. I mean, Kofi Kingston gets the win in this match, and you know, does it really matter at this point? There's no real end product with these guys, and I think that's one thing that. WWE needs to be needs to look at maybe giving these guys a little bit more attention. If these guys are forced to be in these mid, you know, in these in these mid table mid card rivalries, then try and give them at least some sort of storyline to run with because this is just oh. so meaningless. There's no point in even watching it, and it was so it was so filler in the, in in the pay per view, and it, I don't know. It's, it, 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 I I can't see how they thought it would be anything but a minus, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, anyway, we got to see another match with them, but I, I don't want to talk too much about them. And I think from from now on in LTW, if these guys have a match, I'm not even going to reference it anymore. I'm just going to say there was a big blank bit in the match. You know, <laughs> it, it went Something out. happened. I don't remember what. You know what? Actually, it was on Raw. Hmm. Um, that I. I was I started start, started taking notes and I completely forgot because I, I usually jot down winners. Hmm. And I got part way through and then I was sort of reading back through my notes like I didn't put down the winner. Yeah, it was the winner exactly? But does it really matter who the winner is? Because I mean, they've been one of them get the win over the other, one gets the win over the other. It just it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, who wins against these I mean, I saw some things like saying like, "Oh, Miz is going to work face." It's like, why? <laughs> it's just like, oh, we give up. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to turn heel to get a win over or like get one over on anyone, why would it be Kofi Kingston? But one <laughs> yeah. of these days, I will go on another tirade about Kofi Kingston and how I think he's just a big waste of space, um, even more than the Miz, personally. But there we go. Uh, tag team turmoil. We had the uh, the the four team match. Um, Before I say one thing, yeah, how dare Zeb Coulter not have a mic? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess obviously they were going on time restrictions, but he's very good at the start of of their um, when they come in and everything. But uh, yeah, he, I thought this match was pretty good, and um, I thought it was good about the right back. Oh, so, in as, it far as, way tag, as far as fatal four way tag matches go, yeah, yeah it's a good match. And we didn't get to see uh, much of Ryback, so as I said, you know, they were in it for uh, for not very long at all, which is kind of yeah. shows you just how much stock they've got, even in a tag team of these guys. And they've, they've got no sort of plan of what to do with them. And that just shows. But uh, we had um, the, the Real Americans were eliminated next, and obviously, as, as we both predicted, uh, the Rhodes Brothers uh, won and uh, retained their championships after, you know, a, a show of good fortune by Big Show to make sure that Goldust was ready to go. And um, oh yeah, yeah, I, I did like this match, but I mean, obviously, what happened on Raw as well. I, they're going into what seems like a Rhodes versus Big Show Mysterio feud. I'm really not interested. Yeah, I in, couldn't care. Yeah. I mean, this, this is one thing. It's just like we're working so. This definitely is it. It's like. We're working so hard, we really want to improve the tag team division in 2013. Yeah. I think that was one thing that Triple H said when he came over as COO. Like, I want to improve the tag teams. And he cool. has done that, to be fair. He, he has, and I, I sort of care more for the tag team division. But you have tag teams. Stick with the tag teams. Hell, you've got the Los Matadores, or the Primetime Players, and the Usos. 
they get no mention, but it's like, yeah, well, well we've got Big Show and Rey Mysterio. Yeah. That's not a tag team. That's just two people you threw together. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, uh, Curtis Axel and Ryback aren't doing anything, so uh, yeah, let's put them together. Put them together yeah. And it's just like, and especially now that like Rey Mysterio and Big Show are number one contenders for the tag team champions. Yeah. And it's like, I swear, like they did a story with the Usos and the Shield. Because the Usos were pissed because the Shield were number one contenders over them. Yeah. Or something along those lines. And it's like, and now it's just complete, just like, <laughs> fuck off. When you go on to Raw, anyway, and the fact that Usos were picked as CM Punk's tag partners. Uh, obviously, I mean, I, th- I thought that was a shock. I thought the primetime players would at least get a little, a little bit more than what they did. But you got less than the Matadors. Yeah, even less than the Matadors. That was one thing that was shocking. I really don't want to watch the Los Matadors. Uh, their gimmick has already run a little bit old to me, to be fair. They're not good enough to keep that gimmick running for long, and it's not gone on for long without it really kind of getting on me. But, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, they've obviously got a little bit of stock in the Usos, but I'm wary. But you know, I can't really give the, give the give the excuse that I, that they obviously might be wary of doing a face versus face because they're doing that now with this rivalry. That's I, it. I think this is a placeholder. If they if they are going to go with this and have Rhodes against Big Show and Mysterio, if Mysterio and Big Show win the titles, I I I don't know. I think that kind of that's a back step really for yeah. the tag team division. Um, and that's basically going to say to all the tag teams that come up from NXT or any ones that have just come up or or new ones or old ones that have been there for a while, like primetime players have been, you know, waiting for their chance. And um, no, nah, it doesn't matter. We're just going to pair two people guys up together and then you'll you'll be a, a tag team. Um, yeah, I, I, so... don't, I don't like this at all, but we'll see how it goes from there. Um, I don't think these guys can have that good of a match, personally. That's just me. And that's, that's saying something because, I mean, Goldust and Cody Rhodes have been pulling out Phenomenal matches for the better part of um, of three months now. What's it about? Three yeah. four months. Um, they've been fantastic, and I gave them my recommendation for match of the year. And I went back and watched that again this week as well, and I rather enjoyed that. So mm. um, we had a, a a promo with the the brawling buddies. Uh, that was bullshit. That yeah. was the grade A definition. Like if you looked up in the dictionary and it looked up bullshit, <laughs> there was. <laughs> Brawling buddy promo. Yeah, it was it was it was shameful, wasn't it? It was Christmas. It was a Christmas plug for their merchandise, and yeah, that was about it. That's yeah, Kane, like I mean, even though Kane's now like the was he the daily operations officer or something like that, mm. but he's he's like you know he, he's now well, he's part of the authority and all of this, and he's now a suit rather than a big red monster. But even when Kane stands there holding a brawling buddy, yeah, and it's just like. Really, yeah, it did come no. out as funny. It just seemed really, really cheap. You know, it's it really... just like, oh look, it's so lighthearted and funny. And I'm just sat there. It was like, this is awkward. You could, the thing is, right? You could do lighthearted and funny. I don't want anyone listening to the thing. Oh, we hate lighthearted and funny. The weird, the weird just grinches. It's yeah, just like, no that's... fun, no <laughs> laughter. <laughs> Everything must be serious. No, um, I like comedy sections, and there's been a lot of comedy sections that have gone really, really well. Uh, that have been lighthearted. You look at the whole uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan, Doctor Shelby thing. You can't say that wasn't yeah. lighthearted. And, like, the, the, the Harry Met Sally sort of rendition in the. In the diner, which yeah. I thought brilliant. Yeah, so you can do it, but this just seemed really, really off for me. It yeah, just, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't smell right. It was, it was put in the oven for too long. It came out a little bit burnt, shall we say? Yeah. Uh, Brodus Clay, when it gets our truth, yeah, Clay's just a heel. Uh, we we got that now, so. I guess we're going to be expecting the new gimmick soon, which is going to be the main event player. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but uh, yeah, um, it's a fact that I quite liked at the end of it all. I mean, it's like, what I've got here on my notes, like, I'm not feeling it, and the crowd aren't either. No, it's just, it's just like, it was dead. Like, it's just like, nah. Mm. <laughs> like, unless our truth shouted, what's up, and they, half of the, well, I say half of them, like, a small portion of the crowd replied. Yeah, yeah. Apart from that, it was just like, dead. But we did say that before. He doesn't. He yeah. doesn't get that strong a reaction, really, does he? And, yeah. I mean, Clay that's didn't get that much of a reaction. That's why JBL right. says "What's up?" just to make just to make sure that R Truth doesn't feel bad. It's like at least someone responds. Yeah, but R Truth did pull out the big guns to win this match, Matt. He used the roll up pin. What a devastating maneuver! It puts away more superstars. There we go. That's yes, it. I think yeah. we're actually. This is now like four weeks in a row where we've pointed out a roll up. Yeah, yeah. It's what I mean. It's devastating. You just can't get out of it. You get That's you get put in that roll up. You're done. Doesn't matter. 
That's it. So yeah, so you know that was. I mean, Clay going here. We said this. I mean, we said this before. They're kind of drawing this out, and they did on Raw as well. That they kind of drawing it out to make sure that everyone gets to see the fact that he's gone gone heel. So <laughs> next week we might get a little bit more sort of a little bit more heel. Yeah. Well, he's definitely broken apart from the Funkadactyls yeah. now anyway, and and, and uh, sweet tea. Uh, but there's one thing actually with with their match with their match of TLC. Yeah. Where Broders Clay said to Tensai, "I'm better than you." Mm. And I'm just like, really? Mm, yeah. Think uh, you're better than well? I'm gonna. Sh- I'm not gonna call him Tensai. You think you're better than Albert? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's much difference between them in terms of their careers at the moment. I think Brodus Clay can, can make something of himself, especially as a monster heel. But um, to be perfectly honest, Lord Tensai failed. I get the feeling that they are going to go with with, with Brodus Clay, that they're going to go with the main event player gimmick, which I think is not the right move. I think that's... <laughs> yeah, it's... I don't know, I just think they should make this guy go on a rampage. I, just, I think they do. They haven't got any monster heels on their roster. None at all. You can't yeah. class Ryback as a monster heel because he's losing to everyone. I wouldn't be surprised if he lost to Zack Ryder, the most famous, famous jobber they have at the moment. The because, Wyatts. Yeah. yeah. What? What do you monster mean? Monster Hill? Well, no, they're not really. I wouldn't call them Monster Hill. They're more creepy, aren't they? Creepy Hill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but oh, it's a, a like big, just, intimidating it's a guy. Destructive Hill. Yeah. I mean, since um, you know, they've just got no one. They really don't. I just think that there's uh, there's, a, there's some there's a, a space there for him. But I think they're probably going to go with this main event main event player gimmick. He's going to come out. Oh, I'm the main event player. He's not going to be the same. And he'll um, probably feud feud with Titus O'Neil. <laughs> yeah, the big deal, like, Titus O'Neil. Yeah. Yeah, he'll obviously like, have a match. I'm the main event player. I'm a prime time player. It's like, oh god. But uh, I mean, if you take this uh, that idea, I want to cut. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I. I... Sounds like a, it sounds like one of those terrible ideas. Like, he thinks he's a player, and they're <laughs> players, so they can fight as Lord of the Player. <laughs> Lord of the Players. Who is truly the primest of timest players? <laughs> yeah. So, God, don't give them ideas, Matt. Please do not do that. Uh, right, we did have, obviously, the, the, the Miz Kobe Kingston match after that, but we've gone into that in great length. And then we had uh, Bright against the Wyatt family, which, um, in my opinion, I, in my opinion, this was the better of the two handicaps. There was matches. one more thing. Yeah. I'm guessing this is only in America, mm. but, because they did the tribute to the troops. Now, I quite enjoy tribute to the troops, so I think it's a good little event. Yeah. Jeff Dunham! Does anyone this does anything does do people in America still care for Jeff Dunham? I imagine yes. So I still like I still kinda laugh when I watch some of his stuff, but it's like Yeah, that was short lived over here. I imagine it'll probably go over well in that in, in the event, but um yeah, he kinda came over in a flash over in, in England and then he kind of was never heard from again. It was quite funny as well that I think everyone in England watched just that one stand-up routine of Jeff Dunham and then they never kind of caught up with the rest of his stuff because, I mean, he has his own show now, everything, where he does new skits and all that lot. But oh, yeah. it's it's just, this... it just doesn't show over here, so... Yeah, so as a result, like, the other the foreign crowds are literally just like, mm. Mm. Um, Before you head on to the br- Daniel Bryan and the Whites... Go on. Have you listened to the Daniel Bryan interview was on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast. I haven't yet, and um, uh, uh, reason being is because, I mean, one, obviously this week was just crazy hectic. for um, wrestling stuff, but also as well, uh, pod- uh, podcast one, um, it's just really awkward for watching stuff on your phone. That's why we picked Podbean to go on. This day, anyone's wondering why we're on Podbean because it's easier to stream to your phone. That's why 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 we picked Podbean over. I mean, you have to. Yeah, I, I mean, I was anyway. listening. I was listening to it all off my PC. Yeah. To be fair, so. Um, but yeah, go on. If, if, is it was there any parts of it that you? I'm not regarding the Wyatt family, but it was a really good. It was actually a really good interview. I mean, especially as sort of like a modern day sort of thing, and it definitely is sort of like an inside of the current workings. Does he go? Of, they're going to talk a lot of, you know, the the what's his like a uh, work schedule and everything like that, or the back yeah, sort yeah. of thing, and sort of like how. Um, sort of like thinking how you know there are still people, you know there are people going around with their tour bus. Like yeah. apparently Jordan has one, yeah. and it's like, and as a result, Randy Atkins like a nine hour sleep a night sort of guy. Yeah, just like still people who are just like, yep, I just get in the car. You look at the top tier, top tier people like I don't know CM Punk has like a two million dollar fucking tour bus. Oh, yeah. um, but you know, fair enough. You got that much money, it obviously gives you. It obviously makes it a little bit easier to go place to place, especially if you're play, if you're going long. You know, you know, going on a long spree. You know, if you're, you know, hand to hand taking a break for a while. Um, yeah. But 
I understand as well that some people will be more inclined to 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 car it, you know, because um, that's part of the travelling routine. But I don't, I'm not, I don't have any qualms with people getting tour buses if they've got enough money to do it. Why not? I would personally, I'd have a tour bus if I have the money. Oh, uh, uh, but I mean, yeah, it's just as a as an interesting lesson. Yeah, I mean, Randy Orton needs his own place to wash all that baby oil off. So yeah, that's to be yeah, that's true. Or just. <laughs> Definitely the room just sort of lays towels out on the floor. <laughs> so he just gets in there, rolls around like a viper, and gets all soaked <laughs> up. <laughs> Try and uh, speed bumps, please. Yeah. <laughs> just bouncing around on towels. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the the, the Wyatt Family match was. I, I thought it was the be- I thought it was better personally than the CM Punk Shield match. Um, <laughs> Bray Wyatt in the ring is just. I love him in the ring because he is he's his character. He def- is becoming like literally a fast favorite for me. Yeah. Like, because it's just, yeah, it is. Like, once he's in the ring, like, he's, com- oh, he's just awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so, he's so 100% just Bray like Wyatt. You, yeah, that's it. I mean, you get people that's like, the moment the bell rings, they become quiet. Yeah. And it's like, but it's not the case with Bray Wyatt, because he's still, he's always still preaching and like, you know, the amount of times, like, this didn't have to be this way, Brian. Yeah. We could be friends and all this lot. And even just like, just beating the hell out of him. Yeah. But it's just the fact, it's just like, He's a hundred percent like committed. Yeah, he is that guy. Like, right? um, like his hexasis crawl was amazing again. <laughs> that is creepy as hell. Um, I remember he d- he did that, didn't he, the first time? And the look on <laughs> who was he wrestling? I think I think it was Kofi <laughs> Kingston. He was wrestling. <laughs> And um, the look on his face was just like, oh, Jesus Christ. I think if I were in the ring and someone was doing that to me, I'd probably think the same. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. it. Oh, it's just, oh, it's just a really good, just a great handicap match as well. Yeah, it was. It was very good. I mean, and and obviously they got the win against him. And I don't know how that's going to build into the future because it looks like Brian's moving into other things. But, um, yeah, I thought. Uh, that... uh, oh, yeah, I, we'll go I into that a little this, bit. I saw this little advert, um, this little snippet on YouTube, and it's like, "What happened on SmackDown?" Yeah. And they attack Brian. So, yeah, I mean, there was obviously a, a promo on Raw that kind of goes against that, but we'll talk about that in a sec as well. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I thought it was good. And like I said, whenever you see Bray Wyatt in the ring, I like the way that they're doing this. The fact they're having Luke Harper and Eric Rowan do the majority of the matches, but at the pay per view, you get to see Bray Wyatt wrestle and I think that's a reason why you would buy a pay-per-view I think they should continue with this I think that Bray Wyatt shouldn't wrestle um, at least for the, 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 the near future on anything apart from a pay-per-view that's where you can build it up and he's still there he's still doing the entrance and the Wyatt family is still fighting he's, he's got a presence I mean even if he's not in the match he still has a presence yeah and he can just still get physical being, with the guys yeah but like just him being ringside is enough hmm I think it'd be a disservice as well if they didn't give us a Wyatt versus Shield match before the Shield breakup, because the 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 entire crowd that night when they when they faced off was so ready. They wanted a Shield versus Wyatt family match. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so, but um, so we that that, fight, that led uh, nicely into the uh, the main event, which was the TLC uh, unification title match uh, against Orton and uh, John Cena. And um, yeah, I mean, all in all, this was a, it was it, it was a good match. It, it wasn't it wasn't bad by any means. It wasn't the best TLC match we've seen. I don't think anything's going to live up to um, the first few TLC matches that the likes of Edge and Hardys and yeah. you know, the Dudley Boys I, had. The, the one thing, though, was like before it all started, it's like, oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be called the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. So that part, WWE poll that they did like a couple of weeks ago counted for nothing. Yeah, well, we knew that anyway. They, <laughs> yeah. they... It's like, oh, at least we made the fans think that they... <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought that they 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 are going to call it the undisputed championship, um, or I mean I don't mind them calling it a WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I think it's a bit of a, a bit of a mouthful, um, but it, uh, I guess it kind of makes sense. I, I'm not that bad on it, but um, the the match itself was was okay. I mean the ending was botched. They were they were trying to make it so John Cena would fly off the ladder and just crash straight through the table. Oh and yeah, you can clearly see the ladder went. The ladder, the ladder just disappeared. He had nothing to kick off of, and he landed and then sort of little he just kind of shuffled over. straight up, just headbutted the table. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and it was just, oh look, he's knocked out on the table, sort of thing. I mean, it, it was a botch. Anyone knows that he was meant to meant to go through the table spectacularly yeah, yeah. and then Orton was going to go up and then do it. Um, to be perfectly honest, I think he, that looked like it would have hurt a lot more than if he'd actually gone through it. Hmm. Um, but 
he kind of deserved it. Now, this is not like that if people listen to this and they go, oh my god, Matt's such a dick. Mm. It's not the fact, it's that. It's the fact that he completely no, no sold a ladder shot. Yeah, he, do, he does that. Like, whilst he was handcuffed to the ropes, and as Orton was bringing down the big ladder, Orton rammed him, and all Cena did was go, so, don't hit Cena! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, if, if if anyone's watching this and thinks that it's okay to no-sell those sort of things, I mean, you look at, at that um, at Big Andy who won... Um, Big Raw, Andy looked, He no-sold the Stone Cold Stunner and everyone just, just went rampaging into it. I think that, <laughs> and guess what? He didn't get his one-year contract. Yeah, he didn't, did he? He wasn't there for very long and he never made his... Uh, I mean, apart from that one Raw where he won the tough enough competition, he was never seen again on Raw. He was never there, so... Um, so, yeah. No selling, well, usually big thing, but if you're John Cena, I guess you can, or Undertaker, Circa, you know, the 80s where you could no sell everything. And Undertaker could no sell everything. Yeah. <laughs> but he was the Undertaker, so. So, I, mean, I guess the the overall park part of, of TLC, what I think of that, was no real five star match. And I think that mm. the, looking back at last year's TLC, if you've got anything to sort of compare from, uh, we did have a five star match with Ryback and Team Hell No against the Shield. That that match was for me that match of the year, and they didn't have anything the, of the same level on this show really for me. I didn't think the main event delivered as much on the on the hype that they wanted it to deliver deliver from. Yeah. Um, with- but I mean, I, I, did, I, did, I did quite like the sort of like, ah, oh, the handcuffs, clever. Mm. But then, uh, the, and I also quite like the fact that sort of Cena did disconnect the bottom turnbuckle, so he had that sort of freedom of movement again. Yeah. But then I was still just like, yeah, yeah, it was a little bit metal, mm-hmm. wasn't it? It, 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 it? it definitely wasn't bad by any means. I don't want anyone to think it wasn't bad. It was, it was a good match. It was fine. But I think that uh, it was, it was, it's one there. Um, I, I think overall the pay-per-view I mean you've got a lot of really really filler matches here you look at the likes of Pronus Clay and R-Truth you look at Miz and Kofi Kingston they are filler matches in every sense of oh, the yeah, word definitely. and I think at pay-per-view you shouldn't have filler matches give that time to the other matches to really go um, full on and when you look at the main event from Raw which I think was better than any of the matches on the on the, on the, oh, definitely. On the pay-per-view yeah. then that, that's sort of testament to you know if these guys are willing to go a little bit longer to have an extra five minutes, then just don't give the likes of my and Kobe Kingston a match because it doesn't serve anything. It's just a down on the entire show. So, so TLC as a full, well, you know, it was okay. It, it wasn't, it wasn't fantastic. It had its moments. It wasn't the TLC of last year. So that's the only thing that you can really say about. Yeah. It. Uh, so that segues us into Raw, which, um, I mean, as I said at the start of, the, of, of this episode, I have struggled to really get through six hours of, of, of wrestling this, of this year. This, this, this year oh, yeah. Well, this year really has been the thing, you know, to try and, of, of a pay-per-view weekend to watch, more, uh, you know, both Raw and um, uh, and the, the, the pay-per-view each, each week. It's, it's getting a little bit tougher each time I do it. Oh, that's it. I mean, it's also... It's also for the fact that we're on that time difference. I mean, it's probably not, but it's no doubt can be so much easier if we both lived in the States. Yeah. But because we're sort of like, we pay-per-view, one in the morning, mm. great. Because it means we're, so we're if, a day if, behind if, everyone, really, aren't that's we? That's it. If we don't watch it that night, then it's sort of like, well, we're probably not going to catch Raw. Mm. Because that's going to be one in the morning as well. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, that's a, that's a strong thing, really, isn't it? That, the fact that... Um, that we we would watch I mean, Raw will start at one AM in the morning here and end at four. Anyone that's got work or even you know my like myself, I've got children to look after. Going to bed at four o'clock is just not a possibility. So you're going to be watching it the day after, which means that you're a day behind you know the Amer- anyone in America who would have watched it in real time. Um, so you know watching that is it, it gets a little bit harder to to really get the time to be able to watch. As it was six hours worth of, of content this this that's it you know, this this week. So. Unfortunately, the time difference may also cost us a pay per view. But there we go. Yeah, that's just that's. Um, that's it... CW is... Huh? What do you mean? It cost us a pay per view? Well, they recently um, said that they would they wouldn't really consider hosting a pay per view in the UK. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Because, because it's like oh well, it can't be live. It's like well, Raw's meant to be live, but you managed to host the Raw in the UK. Yeah. No, I fully understand. I think I think you're you, you, you're dead right, really. That uh, that I understand why they don't do it, but at the same time, I think it's worth maybe airing. I mean, it's on the weekend. It's on a Sunday, um, so it would be airing 
you know, uh, it, it might be airing at a little bit more dodgy time. It'd be airing earlier in the day, you know, in 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 America. I, I think mean, that, even I if think you that's fine. Would have it live, just yeah. Record. I mean, I mean, yeah. Okay, so you're talking like you probably have it like three in the afternoon in America. Yeah. If it started at like seven over here, I think it would make it more. Why not just do it like they do for Raw? Record it and let the Americans watch the playback. Yeah, they couldn't do that back in the WCW days because um, they were the, what WCW were basically doing was what they were telling people the results of the show. So they couldn't do that back then, but they can do that now. It's not as if TNA are going to go and tweeting out the results of the program before it happens. Oh yeah, that, that's just... not that's not going to happen. So I think I think. Yeah, I think it's a bit... I, I still think that we will get a pay-per-view. I do, I do think. I think in the next four years, I think we might have a pay-per-view over here. I, I do firmly believe that. I'd hope so. Um, but, uh, so, we had Raw begin up anyway, and the opening segment was uh, basically... It was it was built to insert Brian, really, into the title picture. Um, and, you know, I, I, I made a small note here that, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not... I think seeing Randy Orton as, as this sort of character is... He's, he's growing on me a little bit in the terms I, th- I still think he is improving a little bit I, I do think that that um, Orton I think he's a whine, I think he's still being a whiny bitch I, I don't know I, I guess it's down to, to each person I just think promo wise I think he's getting I think he's getting there um, oh it's getting be- a lot better at delivering but it's yeah. just like the character of it all and it's just like uh, I shouldn't have to do what you say I'm the WWE World Heavyweight Champion I get my way uh, uh, uh. like you know, you've got kids. Like that literally sounds like two minutes away from a tantrum. Yeah, he's gonna start doing his um, viper stamps in the ring, no, without yeah. anyone there, just until he gets Randy the man. <laughs> Randy won both titles. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it was. It was. It, it served us. I don't like it where they bring everyone out onto the stage and they will have to sit there and 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 watch as Triple H gives oh, a promo. Of course, but they have to, because that justifies why Cena's there. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a good guy. Blah, blah, blah. Put up or shut up. Blah, blah, blah. I was just like, thank you, John. We <laughs> literally, we could have played a, we could have played you, played a promo from five years ago, <laughs> and it probably would have been the same damn thing. Yeah. That's why, like, other than you can't see me, I think put up and shut up is probably his second slogan. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I don't see why. I think that it was fine the first few times for him to um, put over Brian and be like, yeah, you should fight Daniel Bryan or I want to fight Daniel Bryan for the title or anything like this along those lines. But it makes it seem as if Daniel Bryan can't talk for himself, which is, just seems very odd, yeah. which he can, obviously, yeah, talk for himself. That's it. It's like, I want you to do this. Mm. Well... Why doesn't Daniel want it? Well, yeah. Daniel does want it. Well, why doesn't he say it? Yeah, why doesn't he get on the mic or something? Yeah, it, that's the way it comes over to me anyway. But yeah, I, I've, I've already made my, my views known on this. I, I don't see these promos being a good way to start. I mean, this one was, wasn't as bad because, I mean, anything that's going to try and beef up Daniel Bryan, especially to build up towards a main event, is going to get the crowd going, and it did because he's, oh, yeah. the, he's the hottest property they have at the moment. Yeah. Um, so there's no, there's no denying that, to be fair. As much as if anyone turns around and says, oh, Daniel. Brian's not their biggest star. They are lying to you, yeah. and they clearly don't know anything. In terms of merchandise sales, I can I can definitely see John Cena outdoing him. But in terms of actual match quality on um, and having you know the the response from the crowd and getting a crowd going, then you, you can't look past Daniel Bryan. He is their top guy. You know, in terms of that now, and that's, it. that's only testament to his in ring ability. And I mean, we've got a, a very fine. Um, example of that later on in the show so but the first match that we did have was a continuation of what, pretty much what happened on TLC we had uh, the Rhodes brothers against Big Show Mysterio and uh, Big Show Mysterio got the win which is what we we're saying here that they're um, that they they're number one contenders, number now. One contenders now they probably will be going for the titles at, uh, at Royal Rumble I don't know whether uh, I know that the 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 um, the the scoop, as you could say, would be was that they're trying to insert the White family into this, and they're going to try and get the belts on them before WrestleMania, which I wouldn't have a problem with. You know, that, that's fine. And um, but they're facing them on 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 SmackDown. They well, they did face them on SmackDown, um, so it could be something there. And um, but we'd have to see really how that goes. But um, 
it definitely seems like Big Show Mysterio is going to be going against the Rose Brothers, and we said before it doesn't do that much for me, and that's got that's saying something because, like I said, considering that the Rose Brothers have been having just a plethora of really high quality matches this year. Oh yeah, Goldust is really my guy for this year in terms of how you come back and re not even reinvent yourself, just come back. I mean, you look at that guy's skill set that he's done. He over hasn't even year. reinvented himself. Like nothing's changed. Well, you look at his oh, no, skill set. He, d- he never did like the likes of cr- diving cross bodies and going up oh, the yeah. top rope. I mean, uh, and he's faster in the ring as well. I mean, I know he's he's um, he's the lowest weight he's ever been um, in a WWE ring, and that kind of shows the fact that you, you don't need to be a huge behemoth guy because that guy is going around the ring um, at, at such a, a pace. And you know, Goldust isn't exactly a, a young duckling anymore. You know, he's he's, he's oh, yeah. getting on a little bit. Um, but you wouldn't think that looking at his performances in the ring. I think he deserves a hell of a lot of praise th- this year for, mm. for his his in ring in ring work. To be honest, it was actually one thing actually during that opening promo. I, if that's um if that's Goldust's new t shirt for like merch, I want. <laughs> Do you like? I that, like the t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm just a massive Goldust fan as it is. <laughs> it always have been. It makes me wonder what they're going to go from from here, and I don't want to see this quit. Really, I don't. I know they're obviously going to try and go for um, maybe a WrestleMania match, Cody against Goldust, and that would obviously be a good match because these guys have obviously been wrestling as a tag team for so long; they know each other by now, and and everything along those lines. But That's it, yeah. um, I, I don't. Know, I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not really ready to see these guys kind of go yet. Really, I, I, I've, I've enjoyed them a lot since they since they they since WWE Battleground, which is where they had that phenomenal tag team match um i've just been wanting more and more matches from these guys really so that's all it yeah but um we had brand news barrett return and he had another promo on this on this one i actually thought this promo was pretty poor um i didn't think this was as good as the ones that you had beforehand and i i i, I, I that's just personally i i didn't find this as entertaining as um, what he had done beforehand, he only had the one promo as well, which I oh, thought was quite funny because I, I was thinking to myself, what what if now just some lucky bastard ends up winning the lottery in there and he ends up I end up <laughs> kind of eating his words, just like but... tweeting Barra, just like uh, I was there at Raw, and guess what, I won the lottery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, what was your thoughts on this promo anyway? Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, it's about right. average. I mean, it was a, it was a good promo i'd imagine there's a bad news barrett sort of thing yeah. um i don't know i'm more looking forward to just actually seeing him wrestle again yeah they've got to go eventually and they i i i didn't like this personally i think that um the, i mean a lot, a lot of people criticize the, the the gimmick um when he first did those promos well personally i didn't have a problem with them i thought they were okay i thought they were delivered better in this one i just don't i don't think that it was done that well personally i i, I didn't i, I thought when i was watching it i didn't think it was funny i didn't think it was um i didn't think it did much so that's just personally there for me hopefully yeah. he'll come up with a vengeance next time maybe it was just a miscue and like i said he only had one promo this this time you know even though he missed out last week um so maybe it was just one wrong you know bit of writing and then we can go on from that but yeah we had Dolph Ziggler fandango a rematch from the uh kickoff show um, from the TLC where Van Dango got the win, uh, mm-hmm. which we both got wrong. But I mean, Dolph Ziggler won this match, which I think WWE kind of counts it now. If you win Raw, you've won the Raw rivalry, which is odd. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he got this, and uh, yeah, Dolph Ziggler utilized the power of the roll-up pin for this. That's it. There we go. Um, yeah. So that was a so two shows in two nights with a roll-up pin on both of them. Every show that WWE does, there will be a roll-up pin, and until there is. Um, a match without a roll a roll up pin. Um, I'm going to keep making reference to it. So you know you'll you'll find soon that uh, one of these days you'll have like instead of the opening track you'll just have like Damien Sandow's theme song just going off and it would just be <laughs> they haven't used the roll up pin as a finish. Hallelujah. Um, but yeah, I mean yeah, it is what it is. I don't really know what they're doing with these guys. I don't think they know what they're doing with these guys really. So uh, Mark Henry against Biggie Langston. We had the return. Of uh, you know the Bel Air guys against the real Americans, um, <laughs> I can't look at them the same way now. Since you said now that, that I told you that they look like young Phil, Uncle Phil and Carlton, yeah, oh I can't, yeah, I can't look at them the same way. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you've ruined these guys for me, Matt. So <laughs> I, I guess I'm kind of biased when it comes to this thing. I don't know what you want to say, but um, 
yeah, they they went against the the real Americans. It was it was all right, but I mean, I I, I just don't want to see Cesaro in these in these kind of mid card feuds. I do think Cesaro is destined for bigger and better things than what he's doing at the moment. Um, I know the reason why they don't push this guy is because they think that he's boring. Um, but come on, this guy's in ring ability is just surreal. I mean, he 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 deadlifted. Biggie Langston, which is no easy feat. Oh God, yeah. The guy is crazy strong, and that's just that's. I mean, everyone just, wants everyone everyone just really wants to see the Cesaro swing, and it's just like, so how is he like? Oh, he's not really over. It's like really. Yeah, the way the one way you get him over is for him to do like the big swing on a big monster. Get Brodus clean to a monster heel, and then get Cesaro to you to do the big swing on him. Yeah. And that's going to get everyone like, whoa. Or, you know, I think there's something with him. I think that his in-ring ability, is you should put some stock in that guy. I, was, I wasn't I was that convinced when he first came in, probably because I didn't know a lot about what he could do. I mean, I'm sold on this guy now. I, I'm ready to see him. Oh, yeah. I, I'm ready to see these him feud for something better than what he's in now. Uh, I, I don't think he will go for a while. I think they're going to obviously... Coming up to WrestleMania, they're not going to do any drastic changes um, that aren't to do with matches until after Mania because they don't want to take any sort of attention off of what they want on the show. Um, so that's that's pretty much that. But you know, hopefully, 2014 will be a bit of a kinder year towards him. So, so we had the the ultimate turn next. Um, what well, I say, ultimate turn. It, it was just you know, it was Clay Brodus Clay's official heel turn on on Raw. Because they yeah. had to do it on Raw just to make sure that everyone's seen it, because they obviously aren't confident that everyone's everyone's actually watching it on on you know at the the pay per view anyway. The buy rates aren't exactly doing very well, um, but it'll be interesting to see where where like Clay goes next. We said this as well. And, um, I've made a note here that I think the Funkadactyl should should pass on to Xavier Woods personally. I think that. Um, like you need something for Xavier Woods rather than just having Xavier Woods because they're not exactly giving him time to get on the mic and sort of get get over that way. They're just kind of having him as the sidekick of our truth, especially yeah. as this guy apparently likes to have fun. He's got a lot of charisma, and those obviously they're obviously not going to do anything with the Funk Dactyls now. I think it'd be a waste to leave them with um, Sweet Tea. I don't know what they're going to do with him now, but I'd say give him to Xavier Woods and maybe you can do something a little bit different. I don't know what you do with the Funkadactyls. I can't believe I've actually come up with a, with an idea for the Funkadactyls. I don't know why. You're probably not very happy with me right now. No. no. My idea of the Funkadactyls is they can walk. <laughs> is that one of them gets fired and the other one gets repackaged? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Matt. Okay, we get that. So, um... I'll, I'll stick a pin in that. We'll see how that goes anyway. Um, but um, we had the CM Punk promo next with Shawn Michaels, who had a really good back and forth between these guys. That was oh, just a brilliant promo and the crowd interaction and everything. Yeah. I mean, even it's just like with the one more match chant and then it's just then it's Punk to say, I'm pretty sure I've got more than one more match left in me. <laughs> it's just like, that is genius. The, the best rest, the best promo guys they've got on the roster are able to do that. Um, they can fly off off the cuff and come up with stuff like that on the go. And um, yeah, that's just another indication of how good CM Punk is when you get a microphone in his hand. He is he is that good. Um, and they, um, I mean, sure, sure, Michaels was, was equally as, as good. I mean, he's he's kind of being a little bit heelish recently um, yeah. with with his with his actions, I guess. Um, and obviously he brought out, he was very happy to bring out the Shield and they had their match. And as you said, we've already made notice of this before, that CM Punk and the Usos couldn't beat the Shield when CM Punk on his own could. It just seemed very odd for me. I just don't, I don't understand that, but... Um, I can't get it. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they've they obviously done a good makeup work on Roman Reigns' eye to make it look like his eye was busted. Uh, I don't know if you saw that as well. That he, Yeah. Uh, he's probably spent uh, a little bit of uh, Hollywood makeup magic on that, so... Um, but regardless, you know, it served the purpose, I imagine. So, um, yeah. What, what what did you think of of their match? I mean, it, it was okay, wasn't it? I, I just don't. I enjoyed the match, to be fair. Um, quite big fans of the Usos, though, aren't you? Really? I'm quite. Yeah, I'm quite big fans of the Usos. I'd rather see them stuck in any title, um, any tag team sort of feud for titles. Yeah, to be I, mean, fair. They I think they... they're, they're the longest. They've been there the longest out of any of them. Yeah, they haven't like, they haven't been given the strap yet, so that's something mm. that I think that they've at least earned. I, mean, I think it, I, I I I I'm not as big a fan of them as you are. That's not saying that I'm not a fan of them because I am, but um, I I think it, I th- I was I honestly believed when they first came in that they would get swallowed up because 
you know, they they got good in ring talent, but they don't exactly get a lot of time on the mic or anything like that. Um, yeah. But credit to them, I mean, they've got something with the crowd. I mean, the crowd aren't aren't, aren't dead on them. They, they they like them. Obviously, they got voted into this match, so you know, they they obviously got more. You know, the crowd. You know, the general wrestling audience. You know, thinks of them in some sort of regard. So you can't say you say too much bad about them. So yeah, I think they're okay. I think that uh, I think they deserve a title. Uh, you know the titles at some point, but I like the fact that they're not just throwing the belts on all the tag teams to give them a title reign. There's oh, a few yeah. of them that when they get the belts, it will seem like something special. So I guess in that regard as well, I, I'm kind of glad that they're not just throwing the belts on people like they were doing with the, with the World Heavyweight Title before it was merged finally last night. So yeah, well not last night, but on the night prior to the Raw, previous night. Yeah. So uh, Bray Wyatt delivers a, yet again just another brilliant promo. This guy, I'm that not... was really weird. I genuinely thought it's like oh, there's a fourth member, there's a there's a ringleader to the Wyatts. Oh, he's gone crazy and he's talking to an empty chair. <laughs> this is weird. I don't like this. Yeah, but it's it's this is just when you say this is weird, it's just the Wyatt family. You know that it's <laughs> yeah. them by now. So yeah, the, these. I mean, this is he, he's he's been doing this now since since he debuted, and you look at the sum that. You know, we 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 can sit here and sing the, his praises all day long, but I'm I'm glad that WWE has a faction like this because I haven't had a, a really good like creepy faction like this for far too long, and it's something that that even their competitors. I mean, I hate to say TNA TNA isn't a competitor, that's really, but it's the closest thing really that they've got um, to some sort of competition. That even they don't have anything like this, and I don't think they could pull off anything like this as well. It's yeah. it's really hard. I think people don't give Bray Wyatt the credit that it is really hard to pull off this character, and make it seem not kooky, and to make it seem legitimately creepy, and it does feel creepy. Um, so yeah, kudos to him. And it, his bro promo made it seem a lot like the fact that he's not done with Daniel Bryan yet. So oh no, not at all. Maybe and he'll get involved to... in the... In, I, I, I'm pretty sure that Daniel Bryan is going to be involved in a title match, but I'm also pretty sure that the the Whites are going to get involved or it's going to be something along there. Or maybe yeah. the reason why he's not involved in a title match is because he has yet to deal with the, with the Whites. They're not done with him yet, sort of thing. Yeah. They'll, they'll just sort of be a roadblock in the way, sort of thing. One thing I did actually want to say about the Wyatt family as well, one thing I've noticed the last couple of, of months while they've debuted, is that, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of, of everyone that's involved in in the Wyatt family, and uh, I do like Eric Rome because the guy is just a monster. The guy's huge, and, you know, he, can, like, he had that match against Brian, and it was a good uh, powerhouse against, um, you know... Uh, oh, Baldy, Baldy Beardy. Yeah, um, yeah. The sheep face, as we shall call yeah. it. Yeah. But the uh, the other guy that's said there, Luke uh-huh. Harper, I think that guy doesn't. I think that guy's got a lot of technical wrestling prowess behind him. You can just see he's got a lot of moves in his repertoire. He has, yeah. that's why he hasn't used. He it. has a dirty big boot. Yeah, and he's very good in the ring. So I think that, that watch the what keep an eye on this guy. Yeah, he may not be the star of the show when it comes to the Wyatt family, but. When this all said and done, I don't think that he's going to fade into the background. I think there's something there with this guy because I think I he's got a lot of good wrestling ability. A lot of them. I don't think any of them could, will necessarily fade into the background. Yeah, well, you don't know what's going to happen from here on until they decide that the, the Wyatt family's change is done. Its yeah, course. this is only so far they can actually take. I mean, there's the Wyatt family, so that kind of locks Bray Wyatt into it. Yeah, I so. mean, I mean, all groups eventually disband. No group has ever stayed together forever, uh, you know. Um, so that's just the way it is. Whether it'll, it'll go on for years and years and years and years and years, which I think more than likely with this one, with this particular group, it will. But uh, yeah, that was just my thought. Just keep an eye on this guy. He could be, he could be something to look at. Well, he's something to look at now. I mean, he's he's good in the ring, but he could be more than what he is in the next couple of years. I think there's something. There's one thing I don't quite understand with um, Luke Harper, though. Go on. <laughs> what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it's like he's like trying to trying to make sort of mimic some sort of like go call or something. But yeah. It's just like. <laughs> it's almost just like. It's 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 about as ridiculous as ooh, 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 ooh. shut up, Titus. It it sounds a little bit like um like Sylvester Sloan's just like lodged something in his throat. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone just momentarily possesses the car. <laughs> Just literally just leaves Harvard and just goes, <laughs> <laughs> just possesses him because you know why not? Because he's the ghost of well of current <laughs> Stallone. the ghost of Rocky Past, <laughs> the real Christmas um, episode that we do. No, let's not go into that. 
So AJ Lee, Tamina, Alicia Fox um, went against Natalia and the Bella Twins. I'm not really interested in seeing these kind of sort of theme, these uh, divas tag matches. Uh, but one thing I have to say: what a super kick from Tamina! Jesus Christ! She's wow! Really connected with this. Did, you've obviously seen this, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That was actually that was sweet. Yeah, it was. It hit the money spot, and it came out of nowhere. That's 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 part of good camera working. That you know, people watching at home just did not see that coming. It's just whack. And um, yeah, more of that if they can do that without hurting pe- hurting the divas because they might not be able to sell it or um, take it that well. Um, yeah, more more than that. that that's that's good. But uh, AJ Lee comes out with a win anyway after that. After at least it wasn't just a roll up victory. That's the only thing I can really say about this match. At least it actually had like a something different than a roll up victory to finish it off. So, oh yeah, but um, yeah, I, I, if they are going to do um, six women tag matches, then at least they're going to at least they're putting in what they what is technically the the crop of their roster. I mean, there's not much really better that they've got on the raw roster than what was in the ring there. So, I mean, I I don't really count Alicia Fox in that in that category but you know the betters they, they are better than what they've they aren't great in any means they're not very well, they're not very good at, at, at any means but um you know in terms of what they've got at least they're not one what, the point i'm trying to make is that at least they're not trying to put like the likes of uh, axana in the ring again and really sort of showing the fact that they don't have <laughs> i'm quite glad there's no eva marie yeah this is none which is good <laughs> um you know <laughs> The thing is with Eva Marie, I mean, I think the whole kind of thing behind her is that they were trying to show her that she wasn't as good as she thought she was, which I think was a bad move because I think that you're just showing off just how bad, really, that these people that you brought in are. I think it, it reflects badly on WWE more than anything else. But. See, you're taken into that conspiracy meme that I sent you last night. Like, so, what if WWE brought in Eva Marie to show that it could be worse? <laughs> yeah. But it is worse. That's the problem. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's really all we can really say about that. Until they show us something special, there's not really much we can really say um, about the divas that we've already haven't already said. So, but yeah. then came the best match of the two shows that we had: uh, Daniel Bryan against Randy Orton, who pulled out really what was a five star match, really that, fast. That paced. was a pay per view match. Yeah, it was really fast paced. It was really physical. It was really um, stiff in the way that it was worked. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily fast. Some parts of it were fast paced, but then some parts of it were like really good i mean it kind of really sort of sort of plays into sort of the fact that randy orton is not necessarily a full-on like fifth gear aggressor he is collected and he can sort of like sort of judge and gauge the opportunity yeah that he can attack when the when the, when the yeah is right yeah um i thought this oh, just did so much well for i mean a lot of people may not like the ending the fact that uh orton got himself dq'd with a low blow after what was a really good match but i mean i, I, I thought for storyline i thought that was what that was brilliant yeah i thought it was good as well and the reason why i say that over the um you know over what other people saying oh they should have given it a clean finish and, and all this lot i mean you look at the likes of the, of the Just, great heels of 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 all time. One of the greatest heels of all time is Ric Flair, dirtiest player in the game. He finished a yeah. bunch of really good five star matches in the way that this match was finished, with That's a cheap it. finish so he could escape with his belt, so all the people in that arena would hate him and and would not want to see, you know, uh, want to see him get his ass kicked so he wouldn't play any of those fucking games again. That's what made it work, but yeah, I, I see a lot of people going, "Oh, this should get a clean finish." No, I think it was fine. I I, I don't have too much. If anything, it. it really pushes Brian as a f- as sort of like, well, Orton fears Brian. Yeah, sort of they like had, as, he had to as a genuine threat. If he if he has to, if you have to resort to something as fuck, I was getting myself disqualified. Ding. Yeah, and if you have to resort to that. When you sort of realise I can't take this guy down legit, yeah, then that's just like oh my god, like maybe Brian could do it. Yeah, I think the general consensus that they're trying to build up is that that Daniel Bryan can beat Randy Orton, and Randy Orton knows that. That's why he doesn't want to fight him, sort of thing. That's it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's okay. I I I don't know what they're going to do with Brian now. Obviously, they've got the sort of two um, adjacent storylines for this sure, guy. I don't really know where they're going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, all in all, really good match. This is the sort of match that I watch Raw for. I mean, whenever people ask me, oh, why do you still watch Raw? Or it's so, so bad and it's got like, oh, you just, you know, it's just so full of John Cena. Well, no, it isn't, it isn't all bad. They've got matches like this, which I believe is the reason why you should still invest in, in, in Raw. That they've still got something there. That's why I say, we only saw Cena once, but then he did kind of... He came out at the end. Make the save. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was the most yeah. botched fail the save. Just to get an RK, just to get RKO'd. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it looks like they're building up to a triple threat, or they're not building up to a triple threat, or whatever the story is. We don't know. We'll see how it goes. I know what they might end up doing, which I think is probably better. I mean, if they want to do something else with the Wyatt family, then they could have sort of, sort of some sort of match with the Wyatt family, and then still have them involved in the Royal Rumble. They have done that before. People's been in, people have been in matches, and they've come up for the Rumble. And- in the rumble, yeah. Um, so I don't see that too much of a problem. I think the, the general view was that uh, people wanted. Uh, I think a lot of people want uh, Brian to win the rumble, then finally get his big title win at WrestleMania, which makes sense to me. I, I understand that, but it's down to whatever plans that WWE have, and I don't think they look at Brian as being a guy that could sell ma- um, WrestleMania main event tickets. Um, that's just personally, I don't think they're, they're going to give him the main event. But we'll see how it goes from there. So that was Raw in a nutshell. I think Raw as a show was, um, I mean, because of that Brian, uh, Brian uh, Randy Orton match, I'm inclined to say that it was better than TLC, but I'm not sure. There, there was good and bad from from each, really. Yeah, um, but well, um, yeah, I mean, you sort of take what you get. <laughs> you can, yeah. I mean, it, it was okay. I mean, one 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 of the things that I didn't get to see. I mean, you you asked me to catch like an NXT match, which I never got to see. What what what, what was what was the bulk of that match? I mean, to be, it was well, it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, cause NXT is the one thing that I sort of, I leave on my Sky Plus box. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't watch it sort of week in, week out. I'll sort of like, I mean, cause NXT is only an hour long. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's sort it's of like, like bite size, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. So it's like, like, I can leave it and I can come back to it and I can sort of like blitz through NXT, you know, in a session, like, you know, especially, oh, it's an advert. Fast forward. Yeah. Yay. Um, but it was the number one contendership match of, for the NXT Championship, I hate Bo Dallas. <laughs> yeah. say that. You don't believe. I am believe not, I am not him, a you? believer. You're not a believer. No. He can fuck off and go just Bo one. I, I, Matt, I genuinely Matt, don't Matt, care. Don't uh, stop believing. <laughs> okay. I I will stop believing. <laughs> I never believed. It was even even when he eliminated like Wade Barrett in the like the Royal Rumble. I did not believe in it. <laughs> that was like the quickest like call up to the main roster and removal <laughs> yeah. from the main roster. Wait, the main roster next night on Raw. <laughs> no more roster. <laughs> Being all fairness to him, obviously he's done well. And I and what I've seen of him anyway is that he's meant to be that obnoxious heel, that almost like oh, Justin he Bieber wrestler like a, sort of style. I mean, this sort of is the only problem. He looks like a dick. Yes. I just, I just hate. It's not even the fact that I hate his style. I hate his face. <laughs> It's just like you genuinely you dislike look. his features. Yeah, yeah. It's like you look like a person I'd hate. But without going on a Bo Dallas rant, uh, it was the number one contendership match for the NXT Championship uh, between Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville. Yeah, awesome match. Really? Okay. I'll have to have a look at that. Uh, it's one of those, you know, sort of like, oh, these guys have known each other for so long, and they've, you know, they've wrestled together in so many p- parts of the world, and all this lot, and it's like. Now it definitely comes down to this isn't about friendship. This is like who it's almost like I think it was like they sort of put it down to who wants it more sort of thing. Yeah. But oh, this just it was a real sort of pull out all the stops sort of match. Yeah. And the fact that Adrian Neville has like this sort of corkscrew 450. Oh, what? Like, um, like kind of a, a more like the back. What? Like, uh, like Justin Gabriel's. Kind of like Justin Gabriel's, but there's a bit. There's, I think there's about like an extra flip in there. Oh, okay, <laughs> just to go extra, you know. We might not. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've heard that the the, the pedigree oh, around because yeah, no, Justin Gabriel had the 450, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, this is like a corkscrew version of that version of it. Oh, okay. so it's that's like oh, just trying to get my head around it now just makes me dizzy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's just an awesome finish because uh, it was it was actually um, it's actually too. I say low. They're high. They're both of them are sort of high pace wrestlers. Yeah. They're high flying. They're high momentum, and they're pretty hard workers as well. 
Yeah. Um, I've just... heard a lot of good stuff about Sami Zayn, so... El Generico. Yeah. There's one, there's one thing probably most people have heard of. Hmm. Um, Adrian Neville from Newcastle. Yep. Brit, which is always good. Um, so soon, the Brits will take over WWE. They've got a lot of people behind there now. You look at the likes of Paige and Wade Barrett and uh, and uh, Adrian Neville and everything like that. So. Yeah. yeah so. a, a little bit more of a contingency there. And you obviously got Wade Barrett. Uh, not Wade Barrett, sorry. Um, uh, yeah. William Regal looking over them as well. So that's that's got yeah. something to do with that. So that's that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, NXT, as far as what I've heard, I'm a big listener of uh, the, the Solid Monster Sounds Off, which is probably one of the, the biggest wrestling podcasts out there um, and he's a huge advocate for NXT I just don't find a lot of time to be able to watch it and because um, you know you, you know, like I said I mean one, one of the themes of, the, of this particular episode of, of Let's Talk Wrestling is the fact that the to mean in terms of wrestling content we're really oversaturated really um, I mean yeah, I mean, you could say, oh, it wasn't as bad before they, you know, they went from, you know, three hours of Raw to two hours of Raw. It was just an extra hour, really. But that extra hour really does make a difference. I was actually finding myself kind of getting um, really sort of drained at That's that point. They covered, actually, on that um, Daniel Bryan podcast with Steve Austin. Oh, yeah. Um, like, the difference between a two-hour and a three-hour Raw. Yeah. And it's sort of like you don't really want to be in that last hour. Because it's that really difficult one. Because by that point, the crowd's just knackered. Yeah, they, I don't think. I don't, like, I don't, it's I don't your job to go out there. They probably do care about you. Yeah, but they're fucking shattered. Yeah, I think that's, that's that's the bane of a lot of the stuff that they that, in particular, Triple H is trying to do in his career. That he's I've been outdone a lot of the time by. Um, by like the, the likes of Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, where he, or you know, um, you look at the Rock and Hulk Hogan. These events that like Triple H has been on, where he's main evented like WrestleMania and all those and all that. Yeah. But he's done it after these after these after these like matches that have just like drained the crowd of all their energy. Yeah, that's so it. there's nothing left of them. So yeah, I can kind of get what you're saying there. And I don't I don't think a wrestling show is really built for three hours. I think by then the body, especially when you're, it's not only just three hours. You're watching um, start up matches before then. You're watching Watching, you know, they do um, superstar taping, tapings and stuff before the show, and so you're not. It's not just the three hours of Raw. You're watching everything else on they top of that as well. Superstar tapings. Well, no, sometimes they do. Sometimes because it's very it's not, easy. They don't have superstars anymore, do they? They have main event. No, they still have superstars. Do they, they still have superstars? Yeah, they have superstars. Our main event, yeah, apparently. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, once recorded before Raw, once recorded before SmackDown, isn't it? Yeah, I think. I think. I, I'm not entirely sure how that how that goes, but I, I believe it's it is something along those lines. So it's not just like that. It's not just like the three hours of Raw you're watching. You're watching obviously all the ta- all the stuff beforehand, or even some of the dark matches and stuff. So that's really a long time for you to be sitting down in a chair watching wrestling, and you can't expect anyone to be chanting for that long for the entire show unless you've got a after wrestling. WrestleMania Raw crowd, which yeah, that defies the the laws of, of physics and time. So oh yeah, yeah. So is there anything else really that you wanted to go through? I think we've got through this pretty well so far. Oh really? Add anything? No. Yeah, no. I didn't want to add a topic this week because um, obviously you know we had so much to run through. Well, next week we've got the um, the Christmas Raw, and I know a lot of people hate the fact they're doing oh, these gimmicks. Fucking bad Santa, good Santa. I, I like it personally. I don't know. This is Mark Henry versus Damien Sandow. Gee, I wonder who's going to win this one. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like the cheesiness of it, though. I don't know why. I do. I, I, I don't know. It's not the they... fact that it's cheesy. It's not. It's just completely one-sided. <laughs> So I, think it's, I think it's safe to say we're going to see Damien Sandow get hurt get squashed to high heaven yes uh, yeah I'd be inclined to agree with you I think that's probably going to be the case but I I know people are just like oh you know why are they doing these sort of like gimmicky I like it personally the only should... Santa is Mick Foley yes Mick Foley is Santa Claus uh, you know that's, that's, that's the way it goes actually one really minor thing and I think Mick's taken one too many knocks to the head because it was during TLC where he referred to where he referred to Wade Bryant. Wade Bryant. That was the same as me saying Brett Yart last week, those people. Yeah. So We're all inclined to make a few mistakes, <laughs> I guess. And, um, but, uh, yeah, I think that'll do us there for, for, for this week of, of Let's Talk Wrestling. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, listening to us chat away. And, uh, obviously, now you don't have to listen to this in a rush before the pay-per-view starts. So, uh, you know, you can 
us and do it at your own leisure. If you guys did enjoy this and uh, you know you'd like to support the show, uh, don't just uh, leave it a like. You know, share it around. You know, we want to try and get this to as many people as we can, and uh, that way we can uh, you know keep this going for as long as we can, and we can get your your feedback and everything. So, you know, uh, support the show as best you can. Um, if you want to watch this on your mobile, you can go to our Podbean site. I leave that in the description of all of our videos, and I do add them up. Sometimes it goes a little bit later after this goes up on the likes of YouTube. But if you do are desperate to listen to it on your phone, it will be up the same day as the YouTube video, so don't worry too much about that. Um, but apart from that, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, next week we'll have the we'll, we'll review the uh, the Christmas Raw, and we'll also go through some of our uh, memorable moments of the year. So I'm sure we'll go through some of that. I think yeah. that'll probably be our topics. Uh, uh, that'll be our topic. I think that'll be more than that. Just go yeah. through our memorable that, parts. Be. Yeah. So uh, for me, uh, thanks for for uh, listening, and uh, we'll see you again next week. We'll catch you soon. Bye bye.